Hello, high water viewers, and thank you for joining us for our very first live video demonstration that we're so excited about. While I roll some footage of me fumbling around with our camera, I just want to take a minute to introduce today's topic where we'll be demonstrating how to take groundwater elevation readings, prepare a well for sampling, and of course, how to sample. We're joined today by one of our doctoral candidates, who's our one of our leading experts on field monitoring of green infrastructure systems and a true authority on many of our water quality analytical methods. So a huge, huge thank you to her for agreeing to lead this demonstration and also a huge thank you to all of our viewers who we hope will both enjoy this video and have some of their questions answered through the demonstration. So, all right, let's get started. Okay, so what we have here is the water level meter right this is one of the electronic ones and what we have is basically a probe on the end of our tape measure um i guess this one's in meters right and then yeah on the end of the probe there's a sensor that will detect water and so once we insert the probe down the well when it intersects the water level it's going to start making a sound and then what we can measure do you measure from the top of the well riser yeah. okay that's you almost always what it is that's yeah. the best way now and i don't know if you've ever seen one of these but some of there are dual phase water level um, meters and they actually one of the meters one of the probes is for el napple uh, light non-aqueous phase liquids so they're actually able to test for layers of like gasoline and things like that on the surface of water and you can get both the the gasoline phase and the water phase although this one only does water right and first to turn it off and uh, turn it on uh, we can test it by click here if it's mm. that means it's turned on and then use this one to make it stable Okay. Yeah, we can release it by turn this part mm -hmm. to make it more tight. Yeah, okay. So let's see what meter is it? Is it four here? Four, four yeah, that one's four. And, uh, repeat it for several times to make sure it's good enough. Yeah, it looks like. Is that two seven? We will always. Uh. Oh no, I guess that was quite a bit off. Yeah, for um, 424.5. Okay, yeah. So it's, yeah. Okay. 424.5 centimeters. Okay. And then, well, and I'll say, ha having done this in the field, one of the mistakes that I often see mm -hmm. is people will look up here and see five and then go back down and add to it and get you know, a meter off of course um, and then so once you have this value you'll compare it to uh, some survey data right you've got i guess the elevation point for the top of that riser and then you will subtract from that what you just measured and that will be your reference for your groundwater level yeah and the definite will be very also be very useful to calculate the water volume we need to come mm, to get your your purge volumes right. yeah and then so we've got this well network across this bioretention and you've been i guess doing groundwater contours and looking at groundwater flow directions mm -hmm. okay cool um have you ever used the the ones that aren't electronic with the chalk 
one. That one broke. <laughs> yeah, it was broken. Yeah. <laughs> so I did like, I think we use it once. Okay. We used to use it once and uh, actually it's not difficult to use, but uh, yeah. I think uh, basically you you put chalk on the end of the of the it's not really a probe but it's kind of got a similar end to it. You put chalk on it and then when you when it contacts the water it washes the chalk off. You bring it back up and you can see how deep it went and get your you know do a little math and get your reading that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe one of these times we can show that but actually probably probably not going to do that. Um, all right, well, thank you very much. We will come back for the sampling. <laughs> this is the point the lime, what's the rosary balance? 9.03. Okay. So, yeah, just as a some information here we've already measured the groundwater levels yeah. figured out what the depth is inside the screen zone and then calculated what would be three well volumes i believe is you're using right Why? and so we want to purge all three of those well volumes mm -hmm. before we take our sample yeah. to ensure that we have um you know, representative right. water from the aquifer as opposed to, yeah. you know, something that's been sitting in a well for a long time. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do the the purging, which these have a pretty slow recharge, it seems like. Right. So it may take 20 minutes or something to get, at least, at least 20 minutes to get them purged. These two, uh, a little bit, uh, a, a little bit, it's better than well ASB too, but they're still kind of slow. Okay. So this is our. To tie the really, really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have lost a baler down in there before, which I believe is still down in there, right? Maybe uh, two very tidy ones. So yeah. Still yeah. So basically, you just drop it all the way to the bottom. It allows the water to flow in through the bottom yeah. of the baler and then when we pull it up it plugs the bottom and traps the water in the baler yeah and uh, uh for the bucket we use it's five gallons so uh -huh. we can estimate the 9.03 gallons well. okay well this one's much cleaner than the last one we did right. sure. huh i wonder if this is more of a sandy screen zone compared to the last one being maybe more of a clay or something which would explain why in the other one being a clay would be a much lower hydraulic conductivity right yeah. so that's probably why it takes so much longer right. with this one being apparently pretty sandy it looks like mm -hmm. it probably has a pretty good recharge rate yeah hope so hope so yeah All right, well, this part will take a while. I think I'll go ahead and pause the video and we'll come back when we're ready to start sampling. Okay, so here we are ready to sample. We've done the purge. We've got, you know, this second bucket of water here. Right, first one is five gallon and this one around four gallon. Yeah. Uh, what we need to get it out is... Uh... Oh, <laughs> couldn't quite get it. Um, we need to... You want me to hold that bottle? around 9.03 gallons okay yeah it looks like we've we've gotten a, a full three well volume purge yeah. and then... so yeah often and usually depending on regulations you may have to use this tip which goes in the end of the baler and works as sort of a, a spigot um, but a lot of times, and we'll probably do it both ways, a lot of times people just pour it directly off the top of the baler, um, depending on what kind of bottle you have and what your regulations are and yeah. how comfortable you are getting the stuff on your hands possibly, because it does 
get a little messy either way, really. Open this bottle for you. Okay. Yeah, and we're just doing what this, this is a 250 poly bottle. Uh, it's a 50, uh, 500. Oh, 500. Okay. Yeah. So nothing really super challenging here. Uh, sometimes when you do VOAs, there's a regulation to have zero air, so you got to actually get the water meniscus up above your VOA, and when you put the lid on, it sort of squeezes any air out. Mm -hmm. It's not at the right position. Uh, maybe you will see. Uh, you will find the water. It's pouring out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe can we show just real quick what's going on? Basically, there's a plug, a ball plug in the bottom, and so as you as the baler goes down the well, it it opens that valve and allows the water in. But when you pour it, pull it out, it closes, and that's how it essentially. You know, traps the water inside the baler, and yeah, pretty simple. I mean, that's all there really is to it. Um, so I think we've kind of covered everything we were going to today. So thank you very much for helping to demonstrate how all these uh, methods and techniques that we have out here. I really appreciate it. Okay, well thank you so much to everyone who joined us today. We hope we were able to provide some insight into any questions you may have had. And again, a huge thank you to our guest speaker for providing her expertise on this subject. And of course, thank you to everyone who has joined our environmental engineering community by subscribing or leaving comments or even just watching some videos. It really does help us out. So thank you and I'll see you next time.